extra stressors at play that you may not even realize are influencing the way you are playing the game. Things like ranked anxiety, tilts, and even physiological traits like tiredness, fatigue, appetite, and all of those other things that impact gameplay more than you likely realize. I do have older videos about tilt and how to overcome it through taking breaks and just realizing that sometimes your teammates will just suck. The main aspect of those videos discusses how in that mind state, it is incredibly important that you look introspectively and look at how you could improve and actually carry harder. But what about the other side of the spectrum? What about the group of players that never blame their teammates, but rather themselves, causing themselves to play scared, leading them to remain stuck in the rank they are within? Through competing this past weekend and finally getting the gold in person with the team at Penn State University, I believe that I have now gained a thorough understanding of anxiety and how you should harness it to play better in your ranked games. A lot of you that regularly watch this channel are likely support players, and I have to say that you are frequently predisposed to ranked anxiety. I mean, the entire community consistently states that the players within this role are the least skillful and it can quite easily deteriorate your self-confidence quickly. Not to mention, the number one complaint I hear from other players struggling to climb out of platinum is that their teammates suck, most commonly their supports that quote-unquote never heal them. Now, whether this is the case or it isn't, that typically means that a support player was flamed about their gameplay, and when this happens commonly, it is no secret that support players become less confident over time and just stop playing the mode, even if they were solid players to begin with. Anxiety is a function of perceived threat, and many players are so nervous to hit the Q button or make a mistake that it only sets them up for failure. The problem is that if you are experiencing ranked anxiety and you are scared to queue up in general, it is not a matter of completely eradicating anxiety, but rather rather controlling the anxiety. There's a popular model called the yerkes dodson curve that represents the relationship between arousal, being stress or anxiety, and how it influences performance. You may notice that the relationship between the two variables is not linear, and rather curvilinear. In other words, having some anxiety upon going into a ranked match is actually a good thing, but too much or too little negatively impacts performance. This is also generalizable to other areas of life, including exams, job interviews, public speaking, speaking, and the list goes on. The real question that has to be answered, however, is how to overcome this ranked anxiety. A lot of it comes down to understanding the correct level of preparedness you need in order to feel as though you are playing at your best. For example, this weekend, when I was playing with the team at Penn State, we were playing in an in-person environment that is much different than where I normally play against players that were actually pretty good. Obviously, this creates a pretty stressful situation, especially when there's money on the line and people that you don't know are watching you. Without any preparation, I would say my anxiety began on the high end of the Yerkes Dotson distribution. What shifted the anxiety to a more reasonable part of the distribution, however, were the countless hours of scrimmages with the team leading up to the event and the routine I used to warm up to feel as though I had a grasp of where I was and I could trust myself on that given day of play. To make sure we were on the same page, I started with a high anxiety that would have hindered my performance, but with proper preparation, I centered my anxiety, allowing me to focus on my game and perform at my peak level. Through analyzing this story, how can you find that sweet spot to center yourself on that curve? My routine usually consists of hopping on an hour and 45 minutes before the match, doing a half hour of a in training warm up, 15 minutes of 1v1s with my Tracer player, an hour warm-up block with my team, and then finally the game. This is a competing schedule, and most of you are not competing for nearly as high of stakes currently, so a much smaller amount of preparation is fine, but it really comes down to what you need. Maybe you only need to hop into Vaxta for 15 minutes before you queue up. Maybe you need to hop on an alt account for a few games. Maybe you just need to play a singular game of quick play. In all honesty, any of these could just be placebo. But it isn't about how theoretically warmed up you are, but rather a matter of shifting where you are on that curve to become as central as possible mentally. All of this applies to the right side of the curve though. Why haven't we talked about the left? Well, in this case, if you are on the left side of the curve, it is likely that you aren't experiencing ranked anxiety and you are not in a rank that truly pushes you to do more. In that case, you are likely struggling with tilt and need to consult different strategies from a different video, make sure you are focusing strictly on performing and carrying those games as much as possible. As you start climbing into the higher ranks though, you will naturally begin to progress further and further right on the curve. Before we do close out the video, however, I do believe it is important to touch up on a few topics. Ranked anxiety may be the largest factor holding people back from pressing that Q button, but it isn't the only thing that hinders improvement. It is important that you are getting a decent amount of sleep, which is usually about seven to nine hours for an adult. 
I'm no sleep expert, but what I can tell you is that staying up for 24 hours and deciding to grind ranked at 3am may not be the best idea if you're trying to play at your absolute peak. On top of this, it's important that you don't play hungry, but you don't play full either. Make sure that when you're playing, you aren't worrying about that low blood sugar of being hungry, but you're also not feeling like you're going to bring something up because you just ate. The whole idea of this section is to find a balance that makes you physically and mentally comfortable so you can just focus on playing your best. As we do close out the video though, why is discussing ranked anxiety so important? The truth of the matter is, mentality within esports is not talked about enough. It is like taboo almost as though it doesn't exist. What I can tell you is that it is very real, and it is what causes the underdog teams to triumph and the best teams to be brutally upset. It is also what may be holding back many of you from hitting the Q button and just climbing where you truly belong. At the end of the day though, what you have to do is develop your sense of confidence that is not too low as to be overwhelmed by the enemy, but not too high that you lack preparedness and lose a game you really shouldn't be losing. As cringe as you may find it, you really have to give yourself into the brand of the channel and find your swag diff. The confidence without the ego. The best players in the world play against your favorite streamers and players on a daily basis, and they all started somewhere. Super didn't always destroy the Overwatch League, but it was through grinding and mental fortitude that he claimed his spot in where he is today. Trust yourself and give yourself grace. Don't let the random haters and plaque get to you, and you'll be at your target rank in no time where you'll realize that all that stress really didn't matter anyways. Hopefully this video helped at least some of you within the community. It won't always apply to everyone, but this is a topic that is not really covered in really needs more discussion. If you feel as though you want to talk more about this, consider joining my Discord where we have a few channels that are dedicated directly to this topic. That might help you figure out some coping strategies or just some different ways to warm up that'll work for you. Thank you all so much for watching, but until next time, I've got a peace out and Paz out. I'll see you in the next one.